If you're just tuning in, this is Desert Islands, the show where I make a mixtape based on my guests' 10 records that they would bring to a desert island. And so my next guest is no stranger to the show, but I kind of want to give some backstory because uh, for folks who've been following us online, we have one of your videos on our page, like pinned. And I, I, I love that because like, you came on this show at a strange time. <laughs> it yes, was like very. Just, <laughs> it was like a just. twenty-eight days later vibe. Like I feel like you just like started your tour, and then things were kind of being announced that like, hey, we're we're shutting down because there's this thing we don't know what it is. We don't, you know, like it. It was like like March, February, twenty twenty. Like it was like yeah Just start of march there. start of march yeah so we we did we start i i'd done a i'd done a week in canada met greg in winnipeg did the winnipeg mm -hmm. one then we crossed the border and i think we'd done minot fargo i think that was it and then we hit minneapolis where, where yeah. you are and played at palmer's i love palmer's palmer's love is a wild crazy yeah. bar and i love it for it it's it's one of my favorite it's, it's why we host the uh our night there on the uh, at the end of the month just because like it has that anyone can be there and you never know who's going to show up and there's always a great vibe um and, and i'm glad so good to the artist as well they're they really are. like they're absolutely yeah. like the nicest people oh, yeah. and also the other fun game is to see how how drunk tim from lost leader gets <laughs> Usually very. <laughs> See, it's, it's like you're across a great the pond guy. I love him. and you just nailed a local reference. So that, so welcome back, Tim Holmes. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this uh, is really well, I, nice to be back here. Well, it's, it's great to catch up. Well, I only bring this up, and I'm glad you bring up the Palmer's Night, because I, so at the time, you were staying at uh, a punk house I was living in, and Indeed. everyone was just, and I was coming home from, doing a gig and everyone's like hey we have some guests staying um and they and they have um they have a radio interview tomorrow so if you could just be quiet when you i'm like oh yeah totally cool so like i get i get up and, and i do my thing and then like meet y'all at the studio mm -hmm. <laughs> unbeknownst to me that y'all were the artists staying at my house, so at house. We, we just missed each other walking is so like we we were we were sleeping in the same house the entire time and then uh and i and i'm so i'm glad you could come back because i remember we were doing live radio and we were trying to we were trying to get greg Rikus's mixtape and then the tim whole house mixtape and then we had yeah. to get you guys to palmer's to load in and it's just it's like it's it's good to catch up but now and now I, i'm glad to kind of have your I own think I, I, I'm you surprised know, and, you didn't hear us. I must have I must have had to say to Greg, use your inside voice. Because Greg's <laughs> got a very loud, deep, rumbly voice, Greg Rikas. Wonderful guy. Uh, wonderful one of the voice. greatest yeah. live performers I know. But uh, Greg is uh, just like inside voice is not uh, not a thing. I mean, this is how loud Greg's voice is. I mean, he woke in LA, he woke up the guitarist from the Scorpions. Who lives across the way from with his low rumbly voice i mean that guy's ears are going to be shot and so he just must have thought it was an earthquake at first he looked outside and there's just like or little canadian the, smoking the high frequencies, yeah. <laughs> the high frequencies <laughs> are just like shot that like like an elephant maybe greg is all he can pick up now yeah just the sort of <laughs> rumbling most of the people in, in 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 la just thought there was an earthquake going on so yeah i think i must have said to greg inside voice inside, inside. voice. I, it must have worked because i i i can't believe we we missed each other and yet ended up right back to where to where we were it was kind of yeah yeah it was cool um so I'm, I'm glad to talk to you for a couple of reasons one you have new music out but two uh like myself during those years we didn't stop touring you know like we kind of kept finding ways to do it to and do it I, yeah i kind of want to catch up on your perspective because uh, it's uh, when was the last time has it been has it been four years Oh man, has it has it been? That yeah, long? it must have been. Yeah, yeah. Because oh. I mean, we came, we did a redo of that tour in twenty two. Yeah, but we must have I remember that. Other. Yeah, because we did Palmer's again. Um, yeah, we did a redo of that in twenty two, and yeah, and then I did this album at the end of that tour, and then it's finally come out start of this year. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, we were. It was wild because it was like it, it, up until about Lancaster, we did a comedy night in Lancaster, and everybody's making jokes about COVID. 
and it wasn't it didn't feel real it right. was like definitely following me because i'd been in italy before this i'd actually yeah. flown in from italy into canada and yeah. everything was like kind of shutting down around behind me and i was starting to think it was me um and i got we got as far as like lancaster and it's all my jokes about covid and the next night we go to baltimore nba shut down tom hanks gets yeah. it yeah that's it there's like two people at the show we pat long to get to dc it's like 10 people there it's yeah. not looking good then we don't get paid for the philly show because there's not enough people in it's like five but they're five very nice people was that venue the fire perhaps <laughs> uh, in philly it was the pharmacy I, oh, I mean, okay. I, I totally don't blame them because there wasn't that many no, people I, and nobody knew what was going oh, yeah. on. But I but remember, I remember it, my friend Dave buying me a packet of cigarettes and I was just like, I was just like so thankful to him for just even getting a pack of cigarettes. And then I think we yeah. did um, Stroudsburg was, uh, New York got cancelled and we did Stroudsburg. Oh. Uh, and then Stroudsburg, the venue said no, but we did it in the basement. And then Steve-O, uh, our friend Steve-O and, the, and the Crippling Addictions, or Steve-O from The Holy Mess, right. um, absolutely wonderful dude, decided to do it in his basement with his mate Kyle, who lives opposite and stuff. And they were like, yeah, yeah let's do this in the basement. And Greg got a text saying, dear Canadian citizen, we'll be shutting the border in 48 hours. So we sort of mad panic. We did the show. And then the next day, kind of, kind of uh, and I managed to get hold of my label boss in Connecticut, who we had a show with after New York. And he said, oh, well, we'll still do the Connecticut show. So I got dropped in Connecticut. We did like my first ever live stream. I'd never yeah. done one before. And then um, from his kitchen instead of the New York show. And then we did the Connecticut show. And then uh, old uh, old Donny boy was like, we're, we're going to shut off all, all flights to Europe. <laughs> Except for you. It doesn't matter. Too. They're all getting job. shut down. Tremendous <laughs> job. Tremendous <laughs> job. And I was like, right, we're tomorrow then. So I like find the first flight out of uh, <laughs> next morning out of out to the uh back to back to London. And it was like everybody from the UK ran to JFK and I found one from yeah. Newark. And it's like hardly anybody I, on it. And, I had um, so many people like I was taught in similar situations because like I was watching you and because you had just left the studio and I was like, I kind of want to watch their tour to see what <laughs> goes on to them. <laughs> we battled on really to the last minute i mean yeah and did. yeah like literally did the connecticut show went and got some food and then malcolm tent my label boss at tpos records in in the states uh, in connecticut he uh drove me to the airport overnight and mm. sort of dropped me at newark airport uh i think there was literally nobody there which was yeah. wild and um the TSA helped me for ages because I had that stomp box thing. It's like a block of wood with gaffer tape on it and electronics in it. They did not like that. Um, I've, always, I, I've always wanted to ask, what is it like traveling with that thing? Because I know Greg does a lot of trains, but like, how do you deal with planes? Like, do you just have one waiting for you on various continents? Like, do you just? I, I do it? now. Now, now I don't even bring my own guitar. I have a guitar in the states. I have a, yeah. a stomp box that somebody's made for me. I've just got sick of all the questions and just like. Yeah, no, just just have There's stuff there. Merch is, merch is there through TPOS. So TPOS has a little sort of cupboard with all my stuff in it. And uh, every time I arrive, he sort of throws everything at me and then off I go and then come back and any unsold merch and the guitar and the stomp box get put back in the cupboard and then go home. <laughs> so, uh, but, yeah, but it was pretty well it was pretty wild flight. And you mentioned 28 days later and it was like, actually, I got into London. And I was yeah. the only one on the tube. Yeah. It was wild. It, and there was nobody at the stations. And I was like, I'm in 28 days later. This is wild. That's, that's how it felt doing this show after a while. Because like mm -hmm. a lot of people would broadcast from home. And I would, me, I was like, well, there's no one around. I'll still go in the studio. <laughs> yeah, and it, it was well. like the whole city. Was, it was like a movie. It, 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 and, so, and I kind of, once things warmed up, I started talking to not really venues, but like w I remember we started doing parking lot shows at like clothing stores, outdoor breweries. Like we were just trying to figure out, OK, how do we get variety shows again? I, I remember yeah, seeing I... a show in, in, in an alleyway and they were just projecting visuals on the side of a building. Because <laughs> it is. Yeah. It, it, I mean, I did, I I did like a whole I bunch of like pub car parks and yeah. uh 
I did some garden shows and you know whatever we could do really it, it was yeah. kind of it was kind of funny it was like although the British weather uh, uh, I managed to get the luck with the British weather and like I think none of mine got cancelled but a bunch yeah. of friends were like booked the next week and it absolutely chucked it down with rain or something <laughs> yeah oh yeah because oh, that's what it, Britain it, does and uh, so not just through those times you you have not stopped I I, I see like I'd I see Tim Holhouse come up in my feed uh, quite a bit, and you you continue to travel not not just not just like in the UK internationally. Since yeah, then, um, just, what uh, has that been like over the last few years? Because I I feel like I definitely had to modify my traveling rig just because of the everything. But what has been the road running been like for you? Have you had to modify your setup much? Because you, you already don't... are a don't Pretty think I've changed changed much. I mean, like it's got a lot. The bookings got a lot harder. The bookings that got is true. A lot, <laughs> that, that's got like oh dear, that's really like a lot of scrambling for gigs and stuff yeah. and and things because some venues have shut down and yeah, uh, more people are touring and stuff because I guess people were stuck in the houses and I don't blame them. Oh, uh, bands getting back together and stuff, you know, yeah. whatever. It's like, but. Uh, 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 but the actual traveling bit hasn't really been affected. I mean, I just did a uh, January. I did uh, uh, well from the 26th of December to the end of January. I did another month and a half with Greg Rikus. Yeah, um, I love touring with him, and we did like the He's West great. Coast, West Coast, and I'd done the East Coast in November with an awesome band called Swamp Rats. Uh, mm -hmm. If you don't know Swamp Rats, they're amazing, and mm -hmm. they have the cutest dog, Layla. I even oh, wrote nice. a song about her. And uh, so they bring their dog, and the, the dog sits on stage with with them. And by the end, was sitting on stage with me. So, oh, nice, uh, yeah, there yeah, we go. really cute. And um, <laughs> and that. So we we, yeah, it's been kind of back to normal. But I've been changing up some of the stuff I've been doing. So yeah, I've put. Um, I, I had worked. I have been working for the last sort of I think nearly ten years with a band called Gavial from Germany, and we we are going to do some more stuff together. We're just it's, yeah. Partly, actually, that is something with COVID, where that one, we started a new album in 2019, started right, writing right. it, and then COVID happened, and then everybody forgot the songs, and then we've sort of tried to get back, and we sort of gleamed two songs out of right. um, several several sessions, and then I've just ended up writing it, but we're putting that all together. But uh, I will tour with them again. They've had their own things going on. Their, their album's just blown up in Germany and stuff. So oh, nice. So, which is really cool. They signed to a, a big uh, metal label. They're sort of sort of psychedelic stoner rock stuff. Yeah, Gavial, yeah. really good, great band, lovely guys. Um, then, but I decided to put a UK band together. Like, I, oh nice. So I give it a try because the album is a full band album. Yeah, my new yeah. album is is a full band album. So I thought, well, let's give this 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 band thing another go because I've done it yeah. before and it sort of failed um with some friends of mine but i chose really nice friends who are also really good musicians not just really good yeah. musicians i vetted them as personnel and it's it's been going great we lost the bass player um like this week in fact he he did his last gig on saturday with us but we've had a transition so we've already got somebody new in and we had a practice sure. on wednesday practice tomorrow and then we've got gig tomorrow first gig tomorrow with the new bass player but uh, yeah, so it's it's really nice people. They're called the Escape Ghosts. So it's Tim Holhouse and the Escape Ghosts, and um, nice. they're really awesome people. And you know, we've weirdly our drummer isn't the original drummer we chose, but the drummer couldn't for some reason sort of pulled out, like left us in the lurch. Yeah, and we got this this friend of a friend in, and now he's just yeah you know, he was only going to fill in, and we by the end of it we were like you're in the band <laughs> and he loves being in the band with us howard lane he's absolutely awesome and we lost the bass player jay francis harvey but nathan our new bass player is friends not only with howard but also a friend of mine so just really worked out really worked out it's that's amazing i so i want to talk about the 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 full band format because one of the reasons i i was i was thinking about because i in my own road, road running, I was thinking about the the song you have about being a bad tourist. And I was like, I kind of feel like a bad tourist right now. I should listen to that song again. I should just have Tim Holhouse on the show again. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but like, I I remember having conversations about songwriting back then. And I, I've noticed a lot of artists have been kind of over the years since 
since like the the COVID years have been like kind of changing their songwriting approach in a way. Um, mm. and, I, and I was kind of losing this like, oh, this is this is a band record. Like Tim Holhouse is playing with a so like what inspired you to get the band back together, so to speak, because um, bands are tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is like herding cats, isn't it? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> uh, definitely this lot seem a lot, lot easier than any band I've ever been in. I mean, I guess because they're mostly a lot older now. And uh, yeah. yeah, when we were in our 20s, so my, we left our bass player once in my uh, old sludge metal band uh, Among the Missing. We left our bass player at the uh, services by accident. I oh, thought like, I like Oregon Trail style, like actually lost a bass player. <laughs> yeah, I left him in the, the, the ga- uh, in, in the rest stop in the gas station services. Um, I thought I counted enough people into the van. <laughs> I was like, looks like about the right amount. Yeah, so, yeah. One of them must have been running around in circles and I counted him twice. But um, <laughs> but no, so, so this album, well, this album actually was written in 2019. Yeah. So I actually wrote it before I did a song a month. I wrote and recorded a song a month for an entire year. Mm-hmm. And hence the album's called Year. And it's, it sounds easy to do that. But when you're touring 200 shows in a year, not quite so easy. No. There was a lot yeah. of recording stuff on my phone or on an yeah. iPad or something like that. Or or asking somebody if I could borrow their, uh, their Logic Studio uh, in yeah. their home and just like put something down. So I was programming and i decided it was going to be a a more of a a rock record a more straight up record i i had the song gainesville city limits which was just seemed to be such an anomaly to all the other stuff i'd done and it's weirdly been the most popular thing i've ever done um i've always tried to work with sort of band type things sometimes for records anyway Mm -hmm. i mean come the previous album had had band it had in fact a string uh, trio on it but I, this record feels like a band record it, it mm. started out life with a lot of program drums and me playing all the bass and all the guitars and right etc because i can do everything except drum i can play drums but i'm not that good um not the drums in my head that i want to play yeah. anyway uh, yeah. i can play enough to hold a beat but it's it's I'm the same it's sort of <laughs> person building a shed kind yeah, of drumming yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm rhythmically fine but sort of dynamics not uh yeah um, practical and you make good time <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> uh, i've drummed in a doom band and a, a grindcore band but you don't have to do dynamics in those. <laughs> no no yeah um so I've, I've kind of always envisaged it as a as a full band record and then when we actually went to record in 22 with tim van dorn in antwerp i did it literally after three months or something with uh with greg is it February, March, April, and then we did it in May? Yes, about three, four months. Um, so we had um, a, the plan was to actually get the drums done there as well, but the mm. drummer is, on the record isn't Howard, it's a guy called Pete Wright. And Pete Wright drums in Millie Manda and the Shut Ups, if you don't know them in yeah, the States, yeah, you should. Actually. Yeah, they're, yeah, really, they're really good. good. They're so really he, good. Pete's the drummer in that, and it was also in Ducking Punches. Bad Ideas, he's in another band called Rochambeau, he's also a drum teacher and he's a session drummer, so he yeah. literally lives for playing the drums, which is amazing but he has no time, but he does have a studio where he can record drums so he recorded the drum lines, sent them to Tim and then when we got there I put down all the guitars and then Jay Francis who's my best friend, who I've been trying to kick back into doing music after 25 years, I sort of pressured him into playing bass on 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 the album uh because he's such a good bass player he's just insanely good i mean the point animal that our new bass player was we yeah. had to simplify the solo there's a bass solo on and everybody thinks it's a guitar and it's not it's a bass he's Ooh. that good it Little sounds like a good action <laughs> yeah yeah it's sort of somewhere between sort of uh, jaco pistorius and yeah. uh, peter hook whoa all right yeah so yeah right. um absolutely that's why i needed him on the record i was like yeah but you're gonna bring something also a really great backing vocalist yeah so we're sharing all his backing vocals now amongst the band uh the rest of the band um so jay francis sort of came out to antwerp also had lived in belgium for a while and was kind of up for coming out to belgium 
to see some friends anyway. So, and we got Kieran, who's the viol- one of the violin players on the previous album, come because Kieran just wanted to come out in Antwerp, and I just kind of wanted some violin on there. And Kieran and I tour sometimes as a duo anyway. So Kieran, like literally, like I don't even need to say the song. I play the first chord, and he's already like, "It's already there." I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in there, like sort of thing. So. Um, yeah, so it sort of came together like that, and then I was sort of bringing, uh, uh, sort of put coming to putting the record out and stuff, and I was like, you know what, like I can play these songs solo, but they sound yeah. like the record yeah. with the band, and people yeah. are going to listen to the band and then go, oh, what album is that? This is the new one. This, it yeah. sounds like this. It sounds like <laughs> what you've just heard. Rather than this is a guy with an acoustic guitar doing rock songs stripped down, which is also yeah. fine. I, and I do that obviously when I come to the States because I can't afford to bring the whole band. Yeah, I was I was just gonna ask, like, do you have plans uh to do this material on the road solo? Yes, so I've been I've been doing it in solo in in Europe and and, and in the States. In fact, actually, although the, uh, the fest and uh, what we did yeah. one warm up show in Rally, we did a band called the Plastic Flamingos. Can't thank them enough. They learned the songs, and we did we did two shows with that. And oh, currently awesome. putting together another band with my friend uh, Tyler Troutman, aka Condition Oakland, and they found a drummer. And I, I don't know whether we've going to do it as a three or we might have a bass player their their partner uh sweet amory can play bass but is a little nervous because the bass lines are a little complicated so we might just yeah. tyler will play bass and, and 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 we'll work as a three but uh, yeah so i might even do some more touring as a, a band and if that goes well as it's a sort of put together with a very good friend tyler and amory a absolute dearest friends i love their music so much um so we may end up doing more i may come out and do like a couple of weeks with a band yeah. which would be rad because that's what the album sounds like yeah that's but doing it solo is 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 also possible <laughs> yeah 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 uh well if l- folks like what they heard at the top of the set because we did spin something from this record uh where can they hear it again where's the best place for folks to get their ears on this new record um it's on, it's on spotify it's on all streaming platforms uh, it's tim hole house and that's about with an h not with a w so many people make that mistake <laughs> uh it's my real name as well i wouldn't have called myself tim otherwise would i <laughs> call myself something cool like zach um <laughs> It's something with an edge. <laughs> yeah, a bit edgy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that is my real name, uh, Tim Holehouse, and uh, it's it's over all streaming platforms. It's also on yeah. Ah Real Records. That's three A's, two H's, oh, nice. three exclamation marks. Real Records or T P O S Records in the states in from Connecticut or on my Bandcamp. It's on all those sort of things. And also on ESAD Rex as well in Canada, if there's any listeners over the over the border there in Canada. Sometimes. Sometimes there mm. are actually. Yeah. yeah. So it's 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 kind of everywhere. If you just Google me and it's called Year, it's fairly easy to find, I would think. There we go. There we go. On well, vinyl, CD, tape cassette, and all streaming platforms, as they say. Ooh, fancy. Well, it, if you're just tuning in to Desert Islands, uh, I'm making a mixtape for Tim Holehouse based on the 10 records. Tim would bring to a desert island. The new record year is out now. Uh, Tim, thank you so much for coming back to the show. I, I always love uh, catching up with you, and it's been really you fun too. catching up with you because you've been super busy. Uh, and thank you for taking the time to do this because uh, I know there's a time change, and I know you're really busy. Uh, so That's let's okay. get back <laughs> to the mixtape, and uh, hopefully, I can see you in the states sometime soon. Yes, yeah, hopefully uh, get back out to Minneapolis. I know I'm coming out to do the fest again. Um, anybody going to the fest in Gainesville, Florida, that you're in for a treat. I'm not allowed to say who I'm covering, but Ooh. all I'm going to say is it's really obvious. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like the person I get compared to the most. Oh, okay. All right. Well, and it's I, not I... Nirvana. It's not Kurt Cobain. <laughs> I won't spoil it, but if that sounds uh, up your alley, check out the fest uh, and check out Tim Holehouse's new record. And uh, thank you for checking out Desert Islands. Let's get back to the mixtape, shall we? <laughs> 